On a recent trip to Puerto Rico, I went to Tybes Indigenous Ceremonial Park, which is located just outside of Ponce in Puerto Rico. This is quite an interesting uh, park that is important to the indigenous history of Puerto Rico. So let's go inside the park and take a look around. As you go to the archeological site, you'll cross a river and this river wraps around the site and may have something to do with why the site is here. Let's continue on. From the visitor center, you walk across that bridge we just went across, and then you walk down this path, and this path will lead to the archeological site. All right, we've entered the archeological site. They're doing some lawn maintenance. So you'll hear some noise. We'll stop at the first large plaza. And you can see this extends quite a ways. It's closed on the end near us and open on the other end. Then we continue down the path and we find another set of two rows of stones. Nobody knows why or what the stones were for. Here is another horseshoe court. Closed at this end, open at the other end. Now, the stones you see on the ground, they do not believe these are random stones left there, that they align with other stones. Now, we're coming up to the main court that is enclosed on all four sides with three entrances. So let's go inside here. In this court, there is a center stone. Also in this court are all the petroglyphs. So let's walk over to the main set of petroglyphs which are on one side of this formation. And they've marked them so you can locate them with signs that tell you what to look for. You can see it down there. All right, now I'm gonna turn and you'll notice that the petroglyph I'm standing right in front of aligns with the center stone and the petroglyph on the other side and two rocks. The petroglyph is right in front of the gap in the two rocks. What that means, we don't know.
we walk along this wall more petroglyphs and behind this wall is a small grouping of stones over there now let's go back to the center and walk along the wall and out the entrance again And this wall is rather thick. Why? We don't know. Now we'll move out this entrance into another courtyard. This one has more of a circular pattern to it and it is open on one side and closed on the other sides and it almost looks like a star formation because in this one you'll notice that every grouping has a point on it. That's why they label it the star formation. Moving through, we'll go out this entrance to the star formation. And now we have looks like an arrow on the ground and then another row of stones. Very strange alignments. And here we have another series of stones over there. And here is a series of stones with another petroglyph on it. This is the only petroglyph out here that's not in the largest square with the center stone. And you can see the petroglyph right down there. Now we continue further back. And here in the back corner, we find two rows of stones. One here, and right across it, on the other side, another row of stones. We followed the one row of stones, and now we're in the very back step over the stones here and you see what looks like a fire pit very interesting and then there is one last row of stones and that's the ruins back here. Now let's take a closer look at these petroglyphs. Now when you look at them it's hard to see all the detail so it's a good thing they have the signs next to them to show you what you're looking for which makes it easier to visualize them. Now going back to the court with the center stone in it let's take a look at this petroglyph. 
Now, when I go stand on the other side and look straight across, I can line it up with the center stone and you can see it lines up with another petroglyph between two stones on the other side. Then when I go look around the ruins, I can see other alignments that take place. Here's one and here's another. There are many of these around and I didn't get a picture of every one. Now let's go take a look inside the museum. As we walk around the museum, let me give you a little bit of background on the site. In 1975, a tropical storm caused the river around this site to overflow. Because of that, a discovery was made of strange uh, rock formations by a local resident. They notified the Southwest Archaeological Society when they came to the site, they did an investigation, and this investigation confirmed that this site was an ancient site used by indigenous people. And they started excavation on the site in 1976, and the excavation ended in 1982. This site was inhabited by two groups of people, the first beginning about 300 AC and going until 600 AC. Then in 600 AC, a new group inhabited this site and remained here until 1200 AC. Now, the origins of this site and the reason for this site are unknown because they left no written records of what this place was used for. This body was found at the site, and it was buried in a fetal position. Next to the body was found containers which had food and vessels with fragments. They were found next to the body and were considered offerings for the afterlife. This was a tradition that was used between the years 600 and 1200 A.D. They found a large number of these burials at the site. Now the rest of the museum is full of artifacts, artwork, tools, and items that they used in their everyday life. But there is no evidence that they had a settlement on this site. That settlement was located in another place and they would come here just for ceremonies. Visiting this museum made me feel like I got to know a little bit about the culture that used this site to bury their dead and gather for some purpose that we just don't know what it is. But I found it incredibly interesting. They have another gallery that's almost an open air gallery that has exhibits in it here about archaeology, the future and the past, finding things. Information about animals and plants that inspired a lot of the things we see here, travel and migration, reproductions that the kids can touch. And then connected through a shared past. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video about Tibes indigenous ceremonial park. It was quite the place and I think it's very important to visit sites like this and unfortunately when a group of people don't have a written language that is passed down from generation to generation we lose a lot of the history behind a site. Well until next time see ya!